So hey guys, in this video we are going to take one interesting topic which is having a single phase half wave controlled rectifier with R load. That derivation we are going to do based on the waveform given over here. Okay. So this is just the derivation part. Now remember that controlled rectifier will be using what thyristors. Okay. Remember, uncontrolled it will be diode. So here the switch we are going to use is what controlled switch that is the thyristor we are going to use. Now the basic circuit diagram if you see with R load it will be one input is given which is nothing but the sinusoidal wave we will call it as the supply voltage Vs ok and one switch we have to give basically we are giving here control switch so we can use what a thyristor and current will be flowing through this so the load we have to give we are giving the load as what resistive load. So this completes the circuit. So this we can say name it as what output voltage across the load R load. This is a thyristor we are taking, and Vs is remember Vs is equal to what sin Vm sin omega t. This expression we have to remember the sinusoidal expression. Now proceeding further. Now we have to derive what four thing two things two main things. First thing is V out average that means the average value of output voltage and the RMS value of output voltage. From that directly we can get the current also. Okay, I average as well as I RMS. Starting with the output average output voltage. So average output voltage, let us see the graph. So based on what which waveform we are going to take, based on the output voltage we are going to take. So see here, observe here carefully, the output voltage is over here, this particular thing, okay. Now the period cycle, the period of one pulse we have to see for the output. Now 0 to alpha, alpha is nothing but the firing angle, our P of steady triggering, triggering of the thyristor, okay. So here you can see that this is the triggering pulse. So 0 to alpha, we have not triggered the thyristor, so there is no output in that and from, so alpha to pi if you see, the output is same as the input itself if you see it is same as the input itself right from pi to next phase is nothing but pi to it will go to here basically here pi is there here 2 pi is there okay so this particular part is what 2 pi then 2 pi plus alpha again one more trigger we will give so the period if you see it is from 0 to 2 pi right it is from 0 to 2 pi but the thing is that output weld voltage we can see it is visible between the alpha and pi simple concept so the output is visible which is same as the input voltage vs where you can see it is alpha to pi right so what we are going to do the period cycle is 0 to 2 pi okay 0 to 2 pi is the time period t so we can write it over here so I'll v out average which is equal to 1 by time period into 1 by time period integral 0 to t v out omega t into d omega t okay so v out omega t is basically means you can directly write v out v out is a function of omega t that's it vm sin omega t right now the here what happens with the t t we are taking it as what 1 by 2 pi 2 pi is the period cycle after 2 pi again it will repeat okay though the limits is very important that is a crucial part the output voltage is visible is same as input voltage where in case of what alpha to pi right rest all cases 0 to alpha is 0 pi to 2 pi is again 0 so you can consider from alpha to pi so the limits is quite important alpha to pi we are going to integrate now v out omega t is basically what the vs itself supply voltage because it is same as supply voltage so here if you observe this particular part is same as what supply voltage so we can write it as Vm or you can write Vs first otherwise directly Vm sin omega t d omega t ok. This is the important part of the derivation. So what I have taken 1 by 2 pi 0 to pi then after that period again it will repeat the cycle right. First 0 to pi it will go then again from 2 pi it will again repeat the cycle. Now the limit for the V out be careful. So wherever the output you can see which is same as the input voltage 
Rational part, if you consider also, it is zero. See, from zero to alpha, it is zero. Alpha to pi, the it is same as V m sine omega t. From pi to two pi, again zero. So either you can consider from zero to two pi, then zero to it, you can break it down. For example, this you can break it up. Zero to two pi, if you are considering also, you can break this up as zero to alpha plus alpha to pi plus pi to two pi. Now this particular thing is zero. This also zero. So what is left out? Alpha to pi only is left out. So that's what I have written directly. Okay. So don't get confused here. So let us proceed further. What you have to do? So integration. I hope you remember the integration and all. So the basic uh, the V M is a constant. So you can take it outside. V M by two by outside. Now integration of sine omega t with respect to omega t. So it will be what minus cos omega t. So it is minus cos omega t. So what will be the limits? Limit is alpha two pi. Now upper limit minus lower limit. You have to put V M by two pi is constant. Keep it outside. Upper limit is pi. So minus in place of omega t. See it with respect to omega d omega t. So in place of omega t, pi will come minus lower limit. So minus of minus cos, it will become plus. I hope you understood. Here minus sign is there, so it will become cos alpha in place of omega t alpha. Now, what is v m by two pi? Now cos pi. What is cos pi value? Minus one. Here one more minus is there. Minus into minus plus. So one plus. Now, what is left out? Cos alpha. So, what you can say, this will be the final. Further, we cannot uh, integer. Uh, further, we cannot simplify. So, alpha is nothing but the trivial angle or the firing angle of the trivial there. Okay. So, this is the V out average. So, we have got V out average output voltage. Let us go for the second thing, average output current. So average output current is quite simple. What you have to do is that whatever is the V out average is there. Whatever we find out divided by R. Simple. I is equal to V by R. This is the the same thing. So whatever is the V out average, average output voltage, that you have to just divide with R. So R will come over here. It will be one plus cos alpha. That's it. Third part is to find the RMS output voltage. Now, if you get average output voltage, okay, V out average. From there, it is simple. What you have to do? This particular thing, you have to just take square root and square the function inside. That's it. Okay. So what we are going to do here? What V out average RMS is equal to square root of 1 by 2 pi integral of from where to where we took alpha to pi same as it is v m sine omega t was there what I said square it so it will be v m square sine square omega t so everywhere same concept remember d omega t square root you have to take entire function and integral that function is there you take square of that v m square sine square everywhere it will the same thing. Now square root will be quite confusing. So what I'll do? Square root I can bring it over here. So it will become V out RMS. This particular square it will become. If you want, you can keep square root that itself. Otherwise, take the power as one by two. That is also fine. Okay. Okay. Now what will happen? V M square is constant. You can take it outside. It will be V M square by two by. Now inside function, if you see, it is sine square omega t. Now we don't have direct value for the sine square omega t integral, right? So we are going to simplify that. Remember this particular simplification. If you learn, it is for most of the derivation will be using the same thing. So it is integral alpha to pi sine square omega t can be written as what one minus cos two omega t by two. Okay. Now you might be wondering from where I got this. Now thing is that. Cos two theta we are having formula. I hope you remember. That is nothing but one minus two sine square theta. And cos two theta one more formula is there. Basically we are using this formula. Cos two theta is two cos square theta minus one also. But here we will be utilizing this because sine square is it. So when I shift this particular thing that side, so what will happen? 
it will become sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 simple what you do you shift to this this side and this this side and divided by 2 the same concept here we are applying only thing is that be careful omega t is there in place of theta now we have not found the integral don't get confused we are not found the integral we are just simplifying the sin square omega t so again d omega t is sitting over here now we will do the integration 2 this 2 is common so not common that means it is both for the both term 1 as well as cos 2 omega t take it outside so what will become v out rms square is equal to vm square by 2 pi will become what 4 pi i have taken outside that now one integration will be with respect to omega t will be what omega t okay and cos 2 omega t differentiation uh, integration will be what sin 2 omega t by 2 right by the constant limits alpha to pi okay so upper limit minus lower limit you have to put so vm square by 4 by into upper limit minus lower limit instead of omega t in place of omega t you have to put pi upper limit i am putting right so sin 2 pi by 2 minus of lower limit alpha you have to put in place of omega t alpha minus sin 2 alpha by 2 okay done now 2 pi sin 2 pi is what 0 as we know we have studied sin 2 pi is 0 so what is left out vm square by 4 pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 now this is just v out rms square now i need what v out rms only so square you take it this side it will become square root of this entire thing vm square by 4 pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 When I remove the square root, what will happen? The vm square square root will be gone. Square and square root get cancelled. It will be remaining vm. And 4 square root is what? 2. And pi square root is what? Square root of pi. Rest all terms inside the square root I can keep. Pi minus alpha plus sine 2 alpha by alpha. Sorry, by 2. Okay. So this will be the final expression. If you want, you can take a root by inside. So what will happen? v out rms is equal to vm by 2 square root of pi by pi pi by pi is what i am taking the root pi inside see root pi if you are taking inside it will be pi only remember that so what will happen uh, 1 minus alpha by pi plus sin 2 alpha by pi okay so this particular thing will be the final now we got the third thing also rms output voltage now the fourth and final thing is basically the rms output current so how to find simple i out rms is equal to v out rms divided by r so it will be vm by 2r and the square root of 1 minus alpha by pi plus sin 2 alpha by pi sorry it should be 2 pi right here pi i have taken inside 2 is already sitting so 2 pi so this will be the final thing